A work colleague recently asked my advice on where to store all her family photos since she had reached the five gig limit on her Apple iCloud account and didn't want to pay a monthly fee to increase that limit. I immediately suggested Google Photos since you get 15 gigs of free storage, but more importantly, photos and videos don't count towards the quota. As long as you choose high quality rather than original quality when uploading. You can simply upload as many photos or videos as you like for absolutely free up until June the 1st. You see, Google have announced that after June the 1st, 2021, all photos and videos, regardless of whether you choose original or high quality, will count towards your 15 gigs free storage quota. So if you have a ton of photos and videos and are keen to back them up somewhere safe, I recommend uploading them to Google before June 1st. After that date, every additional photo you add will count towards the 15 gig free limit. Just remember to choose high quality rather than original quality, which simply means that Google will compress your photos and reduce the resolution of any videos down to 1080p, which shouldn't be too much of an issue for most people. So how do you back up all of your photos to Google's cloud and share them with your family? Well, the process is much the same for PC and Mac, which I'll demonstrate now, and then I'll show you how it also works on iOS. The first step is to open your browser and go to Google Photos. Now you will need a Google account to use Google Photos, and I also recommend using Google's Chrome browser just to make the whole process easier. I already have a Google account, which I'm logged into in Chrome, so clicking on the link takes me straight into the Photos app. Now, before doing anything, we need to check our settings to ensure everything we upload is in high quality, not original, to take advantage of that free storage. Having done that, we're ready to start uploading. Now you can simply drag and drop any photos to this window. However, to automate the whole process, I recommend downloading a free Google app called Backup and Sync, which you can find by clicking on Utilities, choosing Backup Photos from your computer, and clicking on the Download button. Before we run through the setup process, any Mac users out there who also use iCloud, you'll need to ensure all your photos are being synced to your computer. And you can check this by going to Preferences in the Photos app and clicking on the iCloud option. Here you want to ensure that that radio button to download originals to this Mac is selected. This ensures a complete copy of all your photos is both held in the cloud and on the computer. Okay, we are ready to install and set up Backup and Sync. Follow the usual installation process and then once installed, open the app and the first step is to log into our Google account. Since I'm already logged into Chrome, I can click on Sign Up using a browser. Confirm the security settings and then we're asked what we want to do and I'll click on the option to back up photos and videos. To speed things up, I'll disable everything except the upload to my photo library. Again, you want to make sure you choose high quality rather than original and we'll click start. Now, window users, you may see a slightly different screen with more options that will look similar to this one. You'll want to have your pictures folder ticked, but you won't have a photo library since this is a Mac application. You may need to also click on the option to select high quality rather than original, and you may also see an additional option to use Google Photos, which you will need to enable. With the setup process complete, you should see the icon displayed in the menu bar. Window users, you'll find it down in the bottom right corner in the system tray. Google will begin to upload your photos to the cloud. Be patient with this process because depending on the amount you're uploading, it will take some time. Okay, once the upload is complete, if you log back into Google Photos, you should now see all your photos successfully uploaded.
Unfortunately, Google doesn't recognize the albums created in the Apple Photos app, so you will need to go through and recreate those by clicking on Albums from the menu and choosing Create Album. I'll call mine Family, and after adding a few photos, I'll click Done. You can share your new library by clicking on the button in the top right corner of the screen and either add the person by their email address or if they are already in your contacts, you can simply click on their name like so. Add a quick note and away you go. You also have a separate option to share your library with someone close to you by clicking on Partner Sharing. Exactly as before, simply provide the details of the person and then you have additional options of whether to share your entire library or just certain folders and you can also opt to add a time frame. Each person you add will receive an email invite. Here you can see both invites sent by Wilson. If I click on the link in the first email, it will take me to the family album. The second invite is the result of partner sharing and I just need to click on open in Google Photos to see everything that was shared with me. Okay, finally you can also upload to Google Photos from your iPhone. To do this, simply install the Google Photos app from the App Store. You'll be asked to allow access to your photos and to sign in to Google. Once logged in again, Choose high quality and you can choose whether to use mobile data to sync your photos between the phone and the cloud. I recommend keeping this option turned off at least for the initial upload, especially if you keep a lot of photos on your phone. I just have the one photo on my phone, which you can see has already been synced. And if I switch back to my Mac, there it is viewable in my browser. So that is how you save all your photos to the cloud and share them with your family for absolutely free. If you found the video useful, I'd appreciate you giving me a like and hit subscribe for lots more quick tips like this one. And before I go, just one more thing. If you've ever considered starting your own YouTube channel or are interested to see how it all works or and how I create my videos, I've created a short free course on my website, which I'll link to below. As I say, it is completely free and well worth a look. Until next time, thank you very much for watching.